Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 1437, written by Vault Dweller 529. Billy Eilish hijacked our minds. A few months ago, I was in a Discord call with my friends. After I left, I had the stupidest thought of thinking if I was taller than Billy Eilish. Went to watch something and half an hour later I got a message from one of those friends saying I was taller than her. It would just be a funny coincidence, they were looking at celebrity heights after I left, but a couple weeks after that I had another stupid thought before going to bed about how I would like to go under the truck like in Need for Speed games when I get my driver's license. That same friend had a dream that night that I drove under the truck during my driving test. Both of these were just my thoughts, and I hadn't told them to anyone before these strange things happened. So those were probably just coincidences, but still kind of weird how similar they were. And I should also say that both of these thoughts happened to me while I was looking for something to watch. Quesal Sofa 1437 Billie Eilish hijacked our minds Hmm, well, <laughs> there are conspiracy theories around Billie Eilish, how she's a demon and hiding or something along those lines. I won't go into that, but mind connections between loved ones and very close friends are common. They're like information superhighways um, just with Wi-Fi, or like satellites in the sky. You don't see the information transfer, but it's very real. Case file number 1438, written by Kit the Human, The Supernatural Sapphire One time, a few years ago, I was making some jewelry. In this case, I was drilling a hole in a broken sapphire crystal to turn it into a pendant. It was not a valuable crystal or anything, could probably retail for about $20 at most. Well, sapphire is hard to drill, so after a time I set everything down and went downstairs to pee or make some tea or something. I wasn't gone for more than a couple minutes. I wedged the sapphire into my jewelry box before I left, sticking it firmly in the ring holder area so it wouldn't roll around. The crystal was long enough that it held the lid slightly ajar. I left the box on my bed. So I came back two minutes later to find the lid was completely closed. I opened it and the crystal was gone. It wasn't anywhere. Not beside the box, not around the area where I was working. I even searched and changed the sheets and moved the bed. It was nowhere to be found. I never found it in the remaining year I was there. Now I live alone in the house one of those British terraced houses. You could only get in through the front door, and it was narrow enough I'd see or hear anyone moving through. No one was in the damn house. What the hell happened to that crystal? Other weird things happened there, but that was the most striking. Quesantifal 1438, The Supernatural Sapphire If I had to guess about objects being infused with spiritual energy, it'd be objects that people value tremendously, emotionally. I think sapphires and other precious gems too, would fall into that category quite often. Who knows who owned the sapphire prior, maybe it was reclaimed by the lost soul it once belonged to. Or it's just a classic DOP, which maybe is more likely, but it's fun to entertain other possibilities. <laughs> Case file number 1439, written by Dabby Dabby Doo, seconds from disaster. I once hit a semi-truck on the highway. I was 18, driving a bit too fast came around a corner and a deer jumped on the road and I slammed on my brakes. My old crappy car looked up and skidded straight. I thought okay, well, just go into the ditch. Then around the corner a semi came towards us. I grabbed the wheel as hard as I could and tried turning but nothing. My best friend is beside me. Seconds before impact, I let go of the wheel and looked at my best friend. In the eyes, trying to say I'm sorry. And we braced ourselves. This was in the middle of nowhere. Now it felt like time slowed down. I was seeing everything, and when I looked to my right, there was a man in a pullout, standing beside his car with his cell phone. This was around 2006, and to me, cell phones weren't as common as today. And I thought, huh, weird. Everything raced in my mind. This is it, I'm gonna die. No, it can't be, it can't. And close my eyes to die. The semi-driver was able to jackknife it to his right for a split second before impact and back, so just my side smashed into him and we flipped over and spun. I remember hearing it. I don't remember feeling it. I opened my eyes and was right side up. My best friend climbed out of his window, but I was out of it and he pulled me out. 
I stood there looking at my smashed pop can looking car and thought, holy crap. And then I fell over, pain in my leg like crazy, like pain I've never felt. That man in the pullout came running over and said he called 911, and then knelt beside me, asked if he could pray for me, and asked if I'm hurt. I said it felt like my leg was shattered. He prayed, for my body, my mind, and then he left. Before the cops came, before the ambulance. At the hospital, they ran tests and x-rays, but no broken bones, nothing, barely a scratch. It's like the Unbreakable movie. The cops said I'm lucky. The doctor said I'm lucky. My mom came to get me and didn't let go for a long time. We went to the impound to get stuff from my car. It looks so bad. The guy there said he's amazed I'm not hurt. He told me to look in the car, and I looked. And the engine and parts of the car were pushed to within a foot or so of my seat. The steering wheel was bent up and within a foot of the chair as well. I asked if anything had been done to it. He said no, they just towed it and put it there. Quesantifa 1439, Seconds from Disaster. It's hard to say if this was quantum immortality or a guardian angel event. It could easily be either. Although quantum immortality is more common, it's so common, it's the Occam Razor's choice if you ask me. But I won't discount a guardian angel, especially since you saw this strange man just lingering and you were like almost in frozen time and you saw it. That does lead me more to guardian angel event. Bonus file written by local boy D. The nightmare on my street. I was feeling down one night and wanted to take a walk. My road is relatively calm during nighttime, besides a few addicts that make small talk. Well, I start feeling this feeling that something just wasn't right, and I normally feel paranoid, but this feeling started to make me physically sick. Well, I look around, and my eyes catch this thing just peering at me behind a trash can. It was long as hell, and purely black. It had long black hands and just stared at me. It wasn't moving or nothing, and all I saw was this bright red eye staring into mine. I've never been so freaking scared in my life, I turned and started running back to my house. When I got at least 5 feet away, I looked back and it was just gone. Never again did I see that monster. Quesantes for the bonus file, the nightmare on my street. Yeah, unknown beast lurking in the shadows, a nightmare indeed. It's impossible to say what it was you saw. The only advice that should be heeded is exercising caution when surrounded by the unknown. And now time for the poem of the day. In twilight's gentle, whispered hush where shadows dance and silence blush. A riddle whispers through the air, a secret tale beyond compare. Moonbeams weave a mystic lore, in silver threads they softly soar. The night unfolds its veiled decree, a cosmic code known just to me. Star shimmer, ancient glyphs unfold, a universe of stories untold. Eclipsed within the midnight sigh, a dash of mystery in the sky. Embrace the enigma, dark and deep. In every second, promises seep, clear to understand, yet veiled in rhyme, an eternal echo, lost in time. It's something that speaks to me, and I think all of us, because we're here because we question the nature of the universe itself, or even not necessarily question it, but just want to know all about it, to delve into the mysteries of it, the uh, ancient glyphs that are unfolding, though slowly, and really, we have to unfold them ourselves. But that's part of the fun of life. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic70 signing off.